Okay, I'm now recording. Uh, welcome to the charting companion class. For um, this is just going to be a general overview of the charts and reports. Um, we're not going to get into the DNA aspect because that's a whole new class tomorrow, uh, and that will probably even be a lot more involved than this just. Um, you know, it's like there's a lot of ducks you gotta get in a row for it to work properly, but once you do, it works great and it's easy to maintain. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. You can run it either as a plugin from Family Tree Maker or you can run it direct. Here's my screen. So you can just run it direct. And then here I'll say, okay, where's, where's your genealogy file? I'm not gonna have it search my whole hard drive just because I know where they're at. Um, you can do load up like a GEDCOM or, um, you know, here I've got like a Roots Magic file. Um, where's, I'm gonna do this one, so. So this will just show you, this is kind of like the root person, um, but you can definitely click on the different people to go up or down. You can also, um, yeah, the, you can also bring up the index to select the person you wanna be as a basis for the chart. So that's running it um, directly. I'm gonna start up Family Tree Maker and do it from there just because I've got my tree and it's got a few other things that Family Tree Maker and Roots Magic can do. Or it can do something extra special with that because um, And that deals with like the color coding for the families that you can do. And it can incorporate those files. So from Family Tree Maker, you just go into tools. And on the Mac, it would just say chart and companion here. Otherwise you just go up to plugins and over to launch it. And it will always come with the same person that you started on. So here I had chart Clarence Benjamin Hall, this is my grandfather. This is who shows up here. So there's his kids, his parents, you know, this is basically the basic information I've got. Uh, now, one of the uh, first things, well, you, I shouldn't say first things, one of the things you should periodically do is check to see if there's an update. And if you do help check for updates, it should tell you. Now, if you've got like an older version, this can be kind of a little misnomer because they've switched hosting providers and they had to change the way that they do the, do the check version. So uh, if you're on an older version, it may still say this if you're running the latest version, even if you're not, or it could also say you're not connected to the internet. The easiest way to check is uh, if you do help, then about. Um, for the Windows version, 7.2.40 is the current. For the Mac, it's 7.3.140. Um, so if you're not running that version, you should update. And on the, uh, and you can also, um, well, let's just go to the charting companion group. Yeah, the only thing about check for updates is if you have version 116 for the Mac version, you need to separately get the update. Right, because that one has the broken uh, bug, I think. Yep. 
I think he said it was fixed in 7.3.124 or 125. Yeah. But uh, in the chart and companion group, in the announcement sections, if you check see all, uh, see all if you scroll down well here one you, here's the links so you can directly download the latest manual uh this is the windows version here's the mac version and i even got the dates on them it it because it has the date on the first or second page when it was printed so you, you know if you've got the current manual or not uh where do you go to update the Mac? Uh, it's the same place. It's under the help menu. Help and there's a check for updates. That's the same on the Mac. And I'm assuming Thanks. they've got the help about charting companion so you can verify the version you're running. Yeah, that's in a different place. Oh, okay. That's probably under the preferences or no, when you start something in the Mac world in the upper left-hand corner, it puts the name of the application. Okay, yeah, so it's and from that. Click on computer. that. Yeah. And then you can see the about charting companion. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, at least that's consistent throughout just the Mac world. Same thing with Family Tree Maker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and here I've got a link to the main download site and I try to keep the, the, the versions updated so you know which one, but here you can just go to, uh, the main link or I even create a bitly, a bitly link, bit.ly slash charting companion. They'll both take you to here. And then it says, okay, so here's the Windows, here's the Apple. So downloading from here, you will always get the latest release version. So, so just in case, that's especially important if you've got like an older version. So, so okay, so that's out of the way. So now the main um, Church, well, they got DNA matrix here and descendants chart with DNA matrix. These both take you to the same place. Uh, and this is just all the descendants charts and the options. The only difference is with DNA matrix, you'd have to put a check mark there, load up your match files. And like I said, I'm not gonna cover these DNA aspects of it. Um, but in general here, it's like you just select how many generations you want to do. If you want to make sure you grab everyone, just type in like 99, you know, that will get everyone. Um, the numbers to print, that's reference number. That's like if you use reference numbers in your tree. So that one John Smith, if you got multiple John Smiths, they'll each have a unique number so you know if it's you, if you see a John Smith one, two, three, and a John Smith 289, you know that they're two separate people. Um, and then date format, you can do either whether you want to display the date, you can have it just do the year, or you can do the month, day, year. Now, this date format. They always use the short date format from your computer. And if you ever want to change that, um, basically just click on the help, go to contents, and then you can just do a short uh, a search for short date. And the Mac version will look slightly different, but here they tell you, okay, if you're running Windows XP, you go here, Windows Vista 7, 8, 10. And even 10, depending upon which version of Windows 10 you've got, that's even changed some. Uh, but they always take, if you see my date down here in the lower right-hand corner, that would be the date in the reports. Uh, but like for Windows here, you go time and language, 
gotta minimize this. Go daytime regional formatting and then change date format. So here's where you can change this short date format. So if you want like day, month, year, see down here, it changed here. That's how they'll print on the reports. Um, or if you wanna print that way. And I know you can even customize this further by going into like the more advanced sections on here. Um, and then likewise, once it says restart changing, restart charting companion after you change the date format. So, so you can change, so you do have control over how that date actually displays. For charts generally, I, I like doing just the year and I leave the reports for all the nitty gritty details. Um, for the events for what you want on it, you just click on it and then you can just select, you know, so I got birth, death, marriage, burial, you know, if you'd want the baptism fact, you know, if you want other facts, you know, even custom facts, you know, like here's my, uh, I create a Facebook, uh, Facebook fact for people's Facebook links. You can do that. Um, you can tell it whether or not print place names, print the descriptions. Um, if you want the spouses on, for the last, the spouses will normally print, uh, but like if they don't have descendants, the spouses wouldn't necessarily print. So you can tell it whether or not you want that, um, the spouses to print. The cousin smart, this is when, you know, you've got cousins, cousins that marry and we've all got them if you go back far enough in your tree. Um, so, um, on one line, you know, where you may descend from two children of the same line because their grandkids or something, their great grandkids had married. Um, and especially when doing like an ancestors chart, it, it can prevent reprinting the same people over and over and over. Uh, what it would do is it would just, it would duplicate the people that get duplicated once and then they'd say, okay, for their parents, see, you know, this section up here. Uh, whether you want photos to print the submitter, that's your info. I usually like doing that because any church reports I print out, I like people to know where they can contact me for updates. Hey, John. Yeah. Um, on the Cousin Smart, do you know if there's any movement by them to go to change it to an interfamilial chart because if you got four or five cousins it, the chart's readable but if you got four or five hundred cousins the chart isn't readable with that cousin smart yeah and we all uh, have it it's just a question of can we when we find them all yeah it's for anything on what they might be changing you'd probably have to ask pierre on friday okay uh because he's the only one that could say for certain. Um, I do know it's like he is always trying to improve the program and stuff. Okay. So, so some of the updates have been put on hold, obviously, with the Mac conversion. But now that that's pretty much so done. Well, use a bigger one, I think. So the twenty-something ounce. Yeah, you could do that or two cans. I don't know. You just eyeball it. No. Uh, and then you've got other formats on the layout, um, chart scale, that's a little, um, I don't mess with that too much because you can adjust that other way. You can set the margins where you want portrait or landscape, you can print a full page border, uh, print page numbers because some charts can have multiple pages. Um, I don't typically mess around with the chart size itself, and I'll, and I'll explain that later. 
Um, but then you can have it go like top down, spouse on the same, uh, top down, spouse below. And this uh, thing right here, the spouse is below them. And the whole reason why I do that is, especially descendants charts are long and skinny. And I put the spouse below them just well for two reasons one it it lets you fill up more of the height the height wise this way and it de decreases this width which is the big thing and if you go to print or if you're paying someone to print it you know they basically charge you by the foot so the shorter you can make this the cheaper it will be so that's why i like doing the spouse below um there's also, you can make it do left to right or bottom up. So, so bottom up, you know, these people here would be down here. And I mean, basically it just inverts this chart. So, um, and then likewise box, you can change all the different types of box sizing and the width. You can put a min and max width or you can tell it all boxes are the same width. Um, and that, that can be important, especially when you're, uh, if you want boxes all the same size, or if um, when you're doing with photos, you can only, you can just have the boxes automatically shrink to just take as much space as you need. But you can also set a max uh, limit on it. And then after that, any text would, would, would word wrap. And then here's the coloring. And now this doesn't have anything to do with, um, you can tell it like on, uh, well, this chart, you really can't see too much of the color coding because I've got, uh, there's so many pictures you can kind of see a little bit. I just had it print by gender. You know, so that way it's like, well, males are blue, females are pink. Sometimes on some of these names, it can be important, especially on especially when you get some names where everyone likes their child to have a unique name and Sometimes you're not sure if it's a male or if it's a boy or a girl. And this way, if you put the color with it, it's like they can point it out if it's wrong. So um, you can also print out by generation. So I'll here, I'll just do a little demonstration. So I'll zoom out. So this is like the light yellow and dark yellow for the generations and you can even custom tweak these um, colors too or you can do it by lineage so it's by uh, the child so each child has got their own color and this is just a subset of my tree so And this is with using the family tree maker colors. That's these colors down here. Oops. These are the colors I've got assigned to, well, this, these are my grandparents right here. These are my grand aunts. So they each got their own color coding. And you can choose whether or not to display those. If you don't do it, you know, then now the now those colors are gone. So that's up to you on um, whether or not you want to do that. Uh, you know, so if we did it by gender, you know, now it's. Yeah, you, you can move these things around too. 
just in case you want to tweak the output, you can always move these around too. Um, but anyway, you can start playing around. Likewise, font, you can add the title, descendant of, and then that will be whoever the starting person is. You know, you can start playing around with borders and even uh, an overall background picture, you know. So if you have a picture of a tree or a family homestead or something like that, you can play around with that. But now whenever I do do these charts, I always preview first. And then the main reason is you'll occasionally see these dotted lines. Well, this is where the page breaks are. And if you want, this is like one chart. You use this, uh, these four arrows here, and this will change the page size so it will fit all on one page. So now that's all one page. And then, and then I will go to publish it. And then you got choice PDF. You can just do it as a graphic. Scalable vector graphics, that's, uh, that's something that, or an AutoCAD format, that those are maybe some other formats that um, a print shop might accept it. Because the PDF does have that 200 inch limit for width. And, and you can tell how big it is because see here, this one is only 27 inches wide. So 11 inches high. So that's not gonna be an issue. But when we publish now, then this will just show up as a one page PDF. And then you can either print it and then let it shrink it down here. If it printed right now, it would scale it down to 40% of what it is. Um, you can also ger generally do it like in poster format. So here it takes, take six, it would take six, six, pages and then you'd tape them together. And this is just a, a function of your uh, PDF display and I'm using Adobe Acrobat. And I did find out, especially on those large documents, um, there are some smaller PDF viewers, but if you've got a large document, like especially one approaching that 200 inch limit, you, uh, I have had problems using other PDF viewers, but using the Adobe Acrobat reader, you don't have any issues with printing out. So um, I know I was away, I went away from them for a while, but I've definitely come back to Adobe because I've, I've seen the the problems other some other programs can viewers can create, so. So, one other neat thing you can do with the descendants is if you wanna, if say you don't wanna print all of these people, and let's just say you only want to see how certain people are related. You know, like Helen to, um, I'll do Garfield here. You can write, you can select the person and then select Garfield again or select Garfield and you can select other people. So here I'll select, uh, I'll select DeWitt here. So I've selected those three people. Now just anywhere on here for any person, I can just say prune the tree and so now it just shows the descendants. Okay, so yeah, there's Helen, DeWitt, and then Garfield. So it just kind of shows how they're all connected. And this gets more impressive once you're down on the cousins lines. And to get back, all you have to do is just change something 
like, oh, well, maybe I want to print the full things, then it will just regenerate the whole thing. So, John? Yes. If I may make one comment, you mentioned a few moments ago about printing to go to publish and then choose PDF, for instance. Yeah. I don't know about Windows, but for, for Mac, it's very important that you do it that way. Go to publish and then save it as a PDF. We in the Mac world often will go to print and then choose to save it as a PDF. The oh, graphic okay. will not look good if you do it that way. Okay, yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's like, yeah, and like anything, it's like, do a preview first. I've just always gotten them to have it. And then plus another version is by doing a, uh, a preview. Sometimes you say, you know, maybe you might want to, you know, shorten the sum. So maybe I want to, you know, drop her down there, you know. You know, move her over, you know. Move her down some, you know, move them over, you can. And then when you go to publish, I'll just overwrite this one. It will it it will remember here how you move how you move these people. I I didn't reset the page size, so this actually went to a second page. So that was a little gotcha on my part. Let me resize it. Yeah. And see, it remembers how you moved them. So, I mean, obviously I would have slipped these over. So that's why it's important to um, preview it first and then publish. Now, some, um, I'm going to search out of the charts for a little bit and go to someone like the reports. One is like the family group record. And this is an anything really spectacular. It's the standard family group sheet. Um, I'm gonna say no notes, no sources. I mean, you can if you want, uh, it's not LDS. And this is a standard format where basically you got the, the main uh, facts. Um, you know, where it's just the born marriage died, you know, there's nothing like exord exceedingly special about this report. Uh, any genealogy program can do it. Um, what is nice is, is you can specify it for multiple generations. So it can do these family group sheets in bulk. And this one, it doesn't matter if you preview or publish right away, because there isn't really any um, thing. So here it does, you know, for my grandparents, here's their 11 kids. Uh, here's the kids that have got second spouses, but now, well, okay, so here's my grandparents, then in this tree, I don't have their children, which would be uh, my mother and uncle, and then it was another uh, boy that was stillborn. Um, but then, you know, here's Helen, you know, it can, like I said, it can do these in bulk, so if you want to create a bunch of them, you don't have to go to each family, print it. Um, you can just tell it, okay, do it for all the descendants or all the ancestors. John? Yeah. Would there be any way to make that uh, report uh, where someone could open it on their computer and fill it in? Uh, no, but... Uh, a lot of a lot of them 
a lot of the viewers now they they've got where you can like annotate so you can kind of like type, type over on the spots i mean they're not the true fillable forms right okay uh Because it, it uh, there's like an ant there. Uh, and I haven't done it in this. I've done it in a previous one. Uh, uh, I've seen those. I think, don't you just click where you want to type? Yeah, well, yeah, there's something you have to go into first. Oh, that just moves that. Down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right here. You can, yeah, you know, uh, well, that's a sticky note. That signature. Yeah, you, you can, like, you know, we can. I think yes. over the right uh, under edit PDF, but you have to have a special version. Well, in edit PDF, that's something different. This, I'm just, you know, that's the, well, but, you know, here you can highlight. And then save that. And yeah. Oh, then you you can add text. Maybe it's this. Yeah, John. The uh, the 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 the, the fillable Adobe's. Yeah. Have a T. Have a T at the top, up there yeah. in the tools. Have a have a a character T, yeah. for text for fill, as the tool. But yeah, you can leave leave notes. And like I said, different PDF viewers got different ways of doing it, where you can actually like annotate it. You can. Um, Put write-ups on it and then you can save that and then send it back or print it and you can print it with all the annotations or you can save it send it back so but that's just a function of your pdf viewer so and yeah i will save that but that's one of the things is when i do the family group sheets i like doing it from charting companion rather than family tree maker just because family tree maker you got to do it one at a time roots magic i believe you have to do it one at a time this one you can just do them all um then ba basically this is a similar one the standard family group how this differs is you choose which facts you want printed uh you know, it's like, okay, I don't use christening. I use most of them are baptism facts. And likewise, you, you can pick whatever facts are in your tree. So, um, and then it will just print out those facts. It's not quite the rigid form that the, the standard family group sheet is. <laughs> Is it possible to remove marriage? Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, on this, on this yeah. one, yes. On the others, uh, not really. I, I don't think you can do that on Family Tree Maker, and it's the source of the horrible unknown spouse problem, I think. And I just, uh, I'm, I'm tired of five-year-old babies having unknown spouses. It, I can't seem to figure out how to turn it off. Well, and if you're a member of the of the, uh, of the main family tree makers users group, yes, yes, they they've got I think a an, a unit section on the unknown spouses, how to find them and how to get rid of them. So, I've never been successful. <laughs> oh yes. It's yeah. very easy once you do it a couple times. Yeah, it's like you run the marriage report to find them, and then it's like basically you detach them, but it all kind of, there's there's different ways of handling it, but like I said, that's a discussion for the family tree maker group, so. So, and once you get rid of them, then it's like, I don't know, once every six months, I might run that marriage report to find them, and so. Um, so, yeah, and the family group record has the same thing. You can specify the number of ge generations. Um,
You know, so it's, it's basically just not quite as rigid. It doesn't leave you the blanks to write in the space, but um, you can customize what facts actually do get displayed. So, um, and then likewise, you can play with the margins and even the font, and that's like with just about anything. Uh, the other report is the kinship. This is uh, tells you how they're related. I'm not going to run this just because it can take a while, but I did uh, run one. Um, you know, where, okay, this is a person and it's all based on, okay, the starting person. So here, ancestors of Clarence Benjamin Hall, Hall. So here it tells you all here, Gladys was his wife. Um, and obviously, well, then here's even the common an ancestor and stuff. So grand aunt, you know, it just goes on second cousins, third cousin, you know. It, it, it's just an, another way of doing uh, the kinship report, but most genealogy programs do have it, but that is an option here too. John, would that show uh, unrelated? Probably. Um, I, I Like I said, I don't mess with this one too often, just because it does take a while to generate. Uh, this one didn't take all that long. Uh, this one is not is only a small subset of my main tree, so there's only like a couple of, a few hundred people in this tree, so as opposed to like 24,000 in my extended one. Um, and then let's see, the, these are charts. The other one now are the Ancestor book and the Descendants book. And these, honestly, I'm not too fond of. I mean, you've only got the basic facts you can choose from, um, which is fine. Uh, but if you only want like the basic reports, um, and this doesn't give you a preview, it just goes to publish. Um, and it creates it in RTF so you can edit it in a word processor. And this is the one thing, unlike Family Tree Maker 2017 and 19, you can actually edit them because they don't use all these frames. But these are just the standard ancestors and descendants reports. So, um, and like I said, there's nothing really special. Uh, some people just might like it. Um, to family tree maker just because you could if you if there are edits you want to do outside of your genealogy program you can do it and they also do give you this little uh snippet you know that that kind of explains how to read uh, the genealogy report um, you know most of us know how to do it but you know your family members who aren't genealogy buffs may not so um, and the descendants report is basically the same the same type of thing you know you can change it you know if want for word word perfect you can choose the word processor um, margins and even names but you know. Now, some of the uh, more different uh, charts, uh, the hourglass chart, that is, uh, that will do your ancestors and descendants. And this here, you can choose the, um, the facts you want displayed again. You can choose the number of ancestors, de uh, descendants. 
Um, you now, likewise, you got the layout box. You can choose, you know, the different types of colors, whether you want to do by lineage, generation, by uh, generation. These descendants can go a different way, you know. Um, say like a bevel. And likewise, border, background, title. And so, scroll. So here's Gladys and Laura. So here are their kids on the right. Let me resize that. And then, so, yeah, uh, Gladys's family I don't have on here. So this is just uh, Clarence's family. His parents, grandparents, great grandparents. Um, if I had Gladys's parents on here, they'd be down here and they'd be over here. So, and then likewise, I think I had here's the, their siblings of uh, Clarence's siblings. And you can choose how. Um, Yeah, ancestor, you can choose basically if you want the ancestors on the left or descendants on the left. All, like I said, it basically does is inverts it. You know, so here the children are over here. Parents, grandparents are all over here, so. Uh, similar to that, uh, is the bow tie chart. How that differs is, here's Clarence. His mother's side is on the right, his father's side is on the left. So here's his mother, here's his father. Then uh, paternal grandparents, paternal grandparents and paternal great grandparents, or then his great grandparents. And likewise, the maternal side's over on the right. Um, the trellis chart, this is kind of a unique chart. And like I said, this one can take a while to download to or to generate. Uh, and where did I, oh, I may not have saved that. Well, I'm gonna cut down the generations here. Uh, th this is the one chart that can actually show everyone on the tree together. And once you, and once you figure it out, you can actually see how everyone is related to everyone else. I said this is taking just a little while. I thought I saved this, but obviously I didn't. John. Yeah. Um, so on this one, you've got the birth, death, and marriage dates. Is that the only information you can include, or can you include others? You can you can include uh, as much info. You can just choose as many different facts as you want. Okay, thanks. So, and you just click on that box where it lists the the facts, and then. Um, oh, what do you need? And All then right. you can just tell it, you know, select okay. like which, which which ones you want. Thank you. Yep. Um, well, any other questions while we're waiting? <laughs> it shouldn't take too much longer, but. We should have the Jeopardy theme song playing yeah. while it's doing <laughs> this. John, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, this is um, Jennifer Radcliffe. I'm wondering, I, I have actually not even opened my charting companion since I got the program. Um, and so I'm wondering when, it, when you are at the beginning and it's asking you to select a file to bring in, um, 
how do you know which which file to choose? Do you export a new GenCom file so that it has all of your current people, or what's well, how do you decide on that? Well, well, first off, where where is your tree right now? Is it um, a family tree maker, or what genealogy program are you using? Yes, it, it's in Family Tree Maker. Well, in Family Tree Maker, basically you can launch it right from uh, from Family Tree Maker itself. You go on. Uh, it won't let me do it right now because while Charting Panion's running, you can't make any changes. Yeah. Uh, but you go into to um, tools. And then the Mac, you will, you'll see Charting Companion or else on Windows, you see the plugins and then uh, you'll see the Charting Companion. So you launch it that way. Now, when you install Charting Companion, Family Tree Maker must be closed. It cannot be running. Okay. Because that way you can put that little hook in, you know, um, so Family Tree Maker can see it. Yeah, but okay. the normal process would be to open Family Tree Maker first with the desired tree open. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and on the person you want the chart to be based on. Okay. So. All right. Well, I think right now under my tools plugins, there's no option. Okay. Then then. Then you'll have to uninstall Charting Companion, close down Family Tree Maker, and reinstall Charting Companion. Okay. Okay. Then it should. So here's the trellis chart right here. So, um, so um, well, here's Clarence. Here's his wife down here, and here you can see. Okay. Clarence is the son here of, if you go up here, so DeWitt and Susan. So, and like Esther here, that's his, uh, his sister. She's the daughter of DeWitt and Susan. As a matter of fact, you can see Bessie, Esther, and uh, this Mabel. So, and then likewise, Clarence, um, We've got a daughter Gladys, or no, these are these are the children. So, so pardon me. Um, Gladys is the daughter of Harvey Bloomfield and Esther and Hersey. See, so it kind of goes, and then these are the siblings of Gladys. So. <laughs> And then likewise, then if you go down here, father, go down. So, okay, so Laura's his daughter, Lily, Louis, you know, it goes on. Like I said, it's just a different way of showing them. And now if you do print this, um, oops, that didn't. Oh, I know why, because I zoomed in, that's why. Well, you'll notice that there's a lot of blank space here. And this would be a big chart. And like it, like in most places, if you'd ever want to print this, most places might have a limit at about 48 inches. Well, this is kind of a square chart with a lot of empty space in, in these diagonal corners. So on this trellis chart, uh, under layout, there's actually a rotate option. So if you rotate it, this is a lot more friendly to plotters to print out. So it, it kind of makes better use of the space. And like I said, you'd only rotate it if, you, if you're going to take it to a print shop to print out. So, or print it out in poster mode on your printer. But you've got the option to minimize the space. Uh, and now the dandelion chart, 
This is an interesting chart because, uh, and this is one where it's nice to start off with a page size because this will, uh, it fills to meet, meet that space. And okay, I've, I've been doing too many things here. <laughs> Yeah, so here's how you start it from Windows. Plugins, export from plugin, chart and companion. Sometimes when it bombs out, yeah, error performing export. Okay, I have to get out of Word itself. And then get back in here. Typically you're not going through every single report and stuff, so you can run out of resources and just restarting and then you're good to go again. So now the dandelion chart, this is a different way of doing the chart here. Like I said, you can choose the facts. Um, this is an interesting one is because this is the one where you can see uh, your parents, your kids, but you can also see the spouse's siblings. So this will just kind of adjust itself to fit the space. So here's Cl here's uh, Clarence and Gladys. And then these little spokes, these are all their kids. And then the neat thing, so here's my grandma, okay, and her husband. But now see here are, is my grandpa's parents. John Clarence and Ingeborg Sophia Viem. And uh, I, I just manually entered them into the sample tree. So that's why the dates aren't printing. But this is one chart that just, that gives you that option of printing out the parents of your spouses if they're in your tree. And it's just a different way of displaying the chart too. So. And likewise, you've got all the boxing and color options and fonts. Uh, ba -ba. Okay. Um, oh yeah, this oh this one I didn't show you before. Uh, the pedigree chart. This is just your standard pedigree chart. Oh. Yeah, something got foobar there. Let me see. Because this can use the family tree maker colors. Oh, I know what I need to do. This is because of that crash. So uh, I'm not sure if the Mac version is the same way, but if you ever need to reset the settings, just hold on the shift key and it will ask you to reset the settings. Pedigree chart, like I said, you can do number generations, four, five, six. Um, and like I said, most genealogy programs do have this too. So, um, So you can do it. it. It does have the added bonus, like this can give the generation numbers and that will carry forward onto the future pages. Um, or you don't have to print them at all. That's this, uh, that show global generation number. So you don't have to show that if you don't want to. And then likewise, it will continue on. If, if there is one that would have little numbers down here as to what page number or what chart number that lineage um, continues on. So like I said, that one's not, and then um, this is kind of the opposite of the descendants chart, the ancestors chart, you know, basically here's parents, grandparents, great grandparents.
and you can even do it like bottom up if you want. This is a left to right, so it's like pedigree view, like in Family Tree Maker. But you can also change it so it's bottom up. And also Clarence, here's his parents and stuff like that. Kind of the opposite of a deep descendants chart. John, I have a question. Yep. Now I came in late and I apologize for that. Yep. So I might've missed this, but these reports and charts look like what's on Family Tree Maker. Why would I use Charting Companion? Well, because they give you different options, more options. Okay. Right. Uh, well, like yeah. I said, the, descend the, the Descendants chart, well, here, let me just get out of, I actually prefer the Descendants charts because let me just do a Descendants, let me just I got to just adjust this because the zoom controls are blocking my view. <laughs> because let me just do a descendants chart here. And this is in poster mode. Do that, you know, and it can even show the pictures. I can even make it, you know, even make them bigger and stuff, but uh, let's see. You know, and this is separating on the page break. But, you know, this is kind of how it works. And like I said, I don't, I can play with the options about how I want these facts and stuff. Like, I don't need to have it print the place in description. And, and this is one... Sorry about that. And this thing, well, this, this this is one nice thing. You you can't you can't adjust it for each one, but if you don't want the place to print, you have to select it for every fact. Um, you know, to print out. Now doing the same chart here in charting companion. Oh, let me just get rid of christening. I don't need to do that. Oh, I didn't have that print the photos. I basically really like it because the photos to me are bigger. And, and, I, and I do like just printing just the year, but like I said, even with the dates, and like I said, you can add the places and stuff. Um, and then also when you get down into the grandchildren and stuff, it can also print all the photos of the spouses, whether or not they've got kids. Uh, I don't think Family Tree Maker does do that. So, and then plus then you can also display the color coding from Family Tree Maker, which it doesn't do. So I, I just prefer them this way because because you can have like all the, you've got lots of different options for the different coloring of the boxes. And yeah, that's the, fair enough, thank you. The layout and I like doing the spouse below. You can even do a left to right one if you want. Yeah, obviously I haven't played around with Charming yeah. Companions. So you, you, you've just got so many more options. Okay. So, so. Uh, then the last charts here are the fan charts. Um, and an ancestor chart now here is, uh, you know, so 
Here's my great grandpa Clarence, his parents, DeWitt and Susan are his parents. Here's DeWitt's parents, Benjamin and Anna, and then Benjamin's pa parents are Elijah and Anna. Anna is Luther and Lavina, and so on. And Betsy, I don't know who her parents are yet. So, and Miles, I'm not sure who his mother's, what her maiden name is. That's why I've got the five underscores there. And then even with that, then you can choose it if, uh, whoops, sorry, selected ancestor fan chart. You can also change if it's gonna be a full circle or a quarter circle. So if it's a full circle, you know, well, looks like that. Now, the biggest problem most people have when they do this is like, okay, say, I want to take it to a print shop. I want it bigger. Uh, what determines that is this radius. And so like, say, for in the U.S., eight and a half by 11, so we're going to do a half circle. So the width is going to be 11 inches. Well, if you take, okay, half that is going to be five and a half inches, but then you have to take into account the, the margins here. So if, if the margins were all zero, you could set it out to five and a half inches, exactly half your paper width. Uh, some printers can't print edge to edge. Some can, some can't. So that's why the radius isn't quite half that. So. So when you say print shop, like Kinko's or what, what are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, Kinko's, okay. uh, Office Max, uh, okay. a local print shop. Uh, okay. So you just take it on a thumb drive? Yeah, on a thumb drive, usually in a, Thing. Okay. No, eight and a half by 11, like I said, that for like four generations prints out fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, but if you want to start doing like six, seven, eight, ten 10 generations, <laughs> it's going to get teeny tiny. Yeah. Um, descendants fan chart is basically the same thing. I'm actually going to show you one I created. Um, if you came in late, here, here's a chart I did for a friend of mine. There's June. This is a descendants chart I had done for her family. This person up here is her grandpa, Melvin Stossling. Uh, and her family is like right, right about here. Um, but there's also a, um, I did a Descendants fan chart from Melvin's grandfather. Uh, no, and that looks like this. Um, So here's Melvin right here. So, and they, they had like 10 kids. The, these last two did not have kids of their own. Now they have a reunion like about every three years. And every year since like the fifties, they've always decided, well, this Burgett, her color was purple. Ingeborg's was red, Oli was blue. Uh, Osney was green, you know, on and on. All their descendants were, you know, they, they'd put those colors on um, the name tags. Mm -hmm. So when uh, descendants fan chart. So when I did this, well, obviously I did this full circle and I bumped that up because this printed out, this is like uh, 36 inches across. So I, I, so I did it with just under an 18 inch radius. And then for the colors, I did it by lineage. 
And then on here, then you can actually click on any of these colors. You don't have to just stick with these colors. You can say, oh, okay, I want this color. Or, you know, if you know the actual numbers, you can type them in or just click over here. You know, you say, okay, that's that. Outline is going to be a specific color. But, you know, you, you can actually select. You've got a wide range of colors that you can all choose from. So, so you don't have to just stick with the given colors. Though they do have like plenty of presets here. And then likewise, then you can save the color palette and load it, you know? So it's like if, if uh, I ever did it, if say I uh, ever needed to update this chart for and said, oh, you know, we found out, you know, you know, maybe, hey, you know, we found out what Melvin's mill name was, you know, or something like this or something like Thomas P. Johnson. Well, we found out what that P stands for. Uh, and actually it stands for Peter, but. Um, and if I had to regenerate this, I don't have to re, I, since I saved those colors, I don't have to remember, okay, exactly what shade of purple was this, you know, what shade of green. You can just go and load the colors from where you saved them, so. And then likewise, you can do background images, stuff like that, so. So while well, that's the general overview of the different charts and reports, um, does anyone have any questions? Oh, that was very thank you, good. John. Appreciate so, it. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Oh, and there's thanks oh, I see a thing. You do not see ancestry colors on the color options of descendants chart on that. Um, I, mm -hmm. I can't I can't really comment if there's any differences on the Mac because I don't have a Mac. I've never even seen the Mac version other than printouts. Um, uh, but if uh, Friday at the Q&A session, it's going to be at 2 p.m. Central Time, so an hour earlier than what this one started. Um, John, what was that Mac question? I do not see ancestry colors on the color options for descender, descendants chart on Mac. They are there. Um, I haven't used them, but I've seen it and wondered what it was. Okay. I do use the Mac version. Just take time and play with all the options. Yeah, yeah, just play. You won't hurt anything. Like I said, you can always reset the settings. Uh, the, uh, do you have uh, the Mac Turn Companion up? Because if you want, you could share your screen. I think I've got it enabled. You could actually share it if you'd want. If you don't, we can wait till Friday any, for Pierre. We don't have any immediately available. Yeah. Well, well, like I said, Friday. we can ask that on uh, for Pierre on Friday. And uh, if you can't make it, it will be recorded. Uh, so just stay tuned and I'll uh, post it so you will see it. So, John. Yeah. The, uh, the DNA class is Friday? The DNA class is tomorrow. Tomorrow. And, and that's going to cover both the uh, uh, charting and the uh, percent, the, both of the two functions? Well, it's primarily going to cover the DNA matrix. Uh, I, I can probably touch on the DNA simulator, but okay. uh, the DNA simulator and the DNA... Uh, uh, da, 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 DNA less or DNA matches. It creates an Excel spreadsheet. Those are all based on the DNA matrix chart. So you have to get that going first before you even attempt the DNA simulator or matches. Okay. And likewise, um, I did post a link. As a matter of fact, there should be a post on the uh, 
in the charting pinion group right now for um, or if you are going to attend that, I highly, highly, highly recommend. Where's the share screen here? This is the YouTube channel. It's YouTube slash user slash JFF, about two Fs, Fossey. Um, and I provided a link straight to the video for downloading match data and adding it to your tree. It's about an hour. Uh, so, some of it is slightly outdated, especially some of the tools are no longer available especially for Ancestry for downloading the data. Uh, but that will kind of cover the basics for adding the DNA stuff. And at least this should give you a little primer for the class. Because it, 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 it can be, there's a definite learning curve. Uh, and it can be a a bit involved as to, you know, especially what these kit, kit IDs are. But once it clicks and once you've got it set up, it's very easy to maintain. And like adding new matches is just a piece of cake. Um, as long as you, you get it in your head how the program works. Um, because it's all about uh, you have a match file or match files. And then in your genealogy program, you have to have it's basically an identifier for who each person is in that match file, how it how it recognizes them. So, um, and like like I said, right now when I do it, it's like about once a month. I just update my match files, so I've always got the latest ones. And then as I find new matches then I just put in their match IDs to who they are in my tree, or I create an unrelated branch if I wanna start using the DNA simulator, add those DNA hooks to them, and then proceed from there. So, um, like I said- it so, so I guess if I've already got all my uh, DNA facts in with all of my uh, people as a, as a individual fact for the identifier that's yeah. I'm, I'm 90 percent of the way there that's best i understand it yeah as long as long as those facts are correct or well the id numbers yeah the id numbers because they've got to match up to your match files right so, so john i can um put my dna kit number from ancestry and from my heritage and jed match can i yes i see okay Thank you. Yeah, because uh, no, let me just. Uh, be separate instances of the fact, correct? Correct. Um, well, I can give you a little highlight here. Well, they, they can all be the same fact, but the table that they're in would be specific to each source because the formats are different from my heritage versus uh, Jed Match versus FTDNA versus Ancestry. Yeah, correct. Um, but. Let me just. Um... But Eric, in, in if you're using Family Tree Maker, you'd have one fact where you would have the, the um, correct number. You'd have another fact where you'd have the Mary, uh, my heritage number. No, no, I, I actually, I actually use one. I use one field to describe the source, and the other one for the number. So then I can sort that way out into the individual tables. And here I'm just showing you a little subset here. Um, John, I'm trying to find the link to the YouTube video, and you mentioned you referenced that it's in announcements, but I can't find it. Um, if you click on announcements, and then uh, let's see, it's one. Two, three, four. It's the fifth video down. Um, it's the fifth post down. Um, let 
Let me. Okay, where it says I've decided to make the videos public back yeah. in April. Yeah, if you if you click on the picture or something, that's the link right there. Thank you. Yeah. So. Okay, right now I um I forgot what we're sharing. What I'm sharing. Sharing the DNA kit number. Oh yeah. Yeah. So here here is for me for instance. See, I've got four DNA kit facts. So this first number, this is how ancestry knows me. This 3-1-CC, blah, blah, blah. Now I've got two different kits on GEDmatch. Uh, this first one, that's my ancestry kit. I loaded up this AD number. Uh, I took a living DNA test um, and put that on. And then this is how my heritage knows me, or no, correction, that's how family tree DNA knows me. And then I've got another one for how my heritage knows me. So I've actually got five DNA kit backs. How did myself. you get that long number from Ancestry? I've never seen a number like that. Well, that, that I'll cover in tomorrow's class. Okie doke. So. Leave them one more, John. Yep. So, and, and, and really, even with the Ancestry, you do not have to use this number if you don't want to. But if uh, there are two utilities that will that still work for downloading your data from Ancestry, and every one of the, them uses that number. So, <laughs> I, so I could always go through whenever I download them and change it to whatever I want. I could have it say bubble gum if I want. <laughs> I actually found four, four people that had the same dang usernames on their IDs. So I was really glad they had different kit numbers. Yeah. Ah. So... Okay, I have a real quick question. Um, this is going back to the charting companion popping up when you're launching straight from Family Tree Maker. Yeah. Um, it doesn't show up on my plugins. So you said I need to delete or uninstall my chart companion, open Family Tree Maker. No, well, okay. well un uninstall. Well, close Family Tree Maker because okay. Family Tree Maker should never be open when installing. Okay. So close it. If it's not seeing it, uninstall Charting Companion and then reinstall it. Okay. Now, my Charting Companion that I happen to have is 70.28. Okay. You will want to download the latest version. Okay. Which is so, 7.2.40. Right. Okay. And if you go to uh, the charting, uh, if you go on to the, the charting painting group uh -huh. and click on the announcements. Um, yeah, I, I saw that when you went to it earlier. Yeah. But I, yeah. I just that, now that, double that's checked. always got the link. Or, or, another, or another way I always. How, how I ever remember, because it's like, I don't want to add another book, another yet another bookmark. I've got hundreds of bookmarks. Right. <laughs> not thousands. I mean, I think I've probably got a hundred in my like to-do list to organize one, you know. But um, how I always remember it is, uh, I go to charting panion site. Mm -hmm. I go to customer support version history. And this will tell you like kind of, well, it should tell you kind of what the latest version is. Like I said, the current version is 7.2.40 and 7.3.1.40 for the Mac. Uh, they don't always update this the quickest, but anyway, if you have charting companion license, click here to download latest version. Okay. And, and this is that link that is in the announcements. Okay. So then you just click it. And this will always be the latest version. Okay. 
So, and then, you know, just get the Mindle, Windows or the Mac version, whichever's app, app, applicable to you, so. All right. And then, and then likewise, if you're still running version six, well, you could get it here, but then, they, I mean, that hasn't been updated in two and a half years, so you probably already have the latest version if you're running six. Six does have the DNA matrix, but it doesn't have the simulator or anything that you do have to upgrade to seven floor. So. So John, really quick, if I'm uninstalling um, the charting companion that I have right now, should I just go to that site and download the most current version to reinstall so that I know that I have the current version because I haven't even been able to get into mine to check which version I have. Yeah, if, if that's the case, yes, I would just go download the latest version and then okay. that way you know you've got it, so. Yeah. So, any other questions? That right, will call it good. Thanks for attending. Maybe we'll see some of you here tomorrow. That one will be a little bit more involved and do try to watch that one video if you can. If not, well, we'll be covering a lot, a lot of it, but it's, uh, um, I'm basically going to be going through that step by step and hopefully just try to explain it better. And then plus you can ask questions if there's some part of it you don't understand, so. Take, take two Excedrin before class. Yeah. Well, like I said, it is a learning curve, like anything with DNA. Uh, but like I said, once you get your head wrapped around it, it makes sense, and it uh, and it works, and it's very, very, very easy to maintain. So, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, uh, Sharon. I don't know if you're talking, uh, but you're muted. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Do do I need to download the DNA match manager first before um, our class tomorrow? Well, okay. Here, here. Well, you don't need to download it first, but here's the thing. There, the company that makes it is no more. Oh. The, their website is down, so you can't download it. I do have the Windows version, I still have the, the installer, so I can provide a link for that because uh, I've just got it on my Dropbox account, so you can just download it straight from there. Um, if you're a Mac user, I don't have the Mac version, so. Um, I, I have a PC, so um, yeah, so I'm just wondering how I would go about doing it if, um, so I'll, I'll have to get something from you then in order to. Well, I tell you what, in the, uh, do you not access the chat here? Uh, no, I get, um, chat. Yes, I, okay, yeah, I click on chat. chat. I will post the link here. Okay. Um, copy Dropbox link. There's the link so you can download the D, the Windows version of DNA Match Manager. So. Oh, great. Okay. Thanks. Now, does that disappear once uh, we disconnect, or do, like yes. do I? Well, I, what I would, uh, yeah, probably will. Uh, so what I do is I'd click on it and start downloading it right now. Well, right now, okay, all right. So, or, el or else message me on the Charting Companion group and I can send the link to, so if you've got a problem. Okay, um, save it for later in Dropbox, it says. Um, or, or you can just download it directly. I mean, if you've got your own Dropbox account, you can just save it straight to your Dropbox. Um, Otherwise you can download it and it's not that big of a file it's uh 
Yeah, it's just a little over 40 meg. So, I mean, it's... Um, so, it's not that big of a file, so... Okay, I know I, I used to have... I haven't used it in years and years, but um, I just have to find my... Um, find my password or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, well, like I said, if that's the case, just down, you can just download the file direct to your computer. Oh, can I? Oh, okay. Yeah. Download, okay. So, and, and the DNA match manager is still my preferred way for downloading for Ancestry. And for the simple fact of I've got like 26 kits I download on a monthly basis. And that takes about, um, well, it used to take longer since but when Ancestry cut down the six, six and seven cent of Morgan matches, it, uh, I just ran it like less than a week ago and it took about 10 and a half hours. So oh okay. then it downloads over 400,000 matches. So, and it used to be higher about closer to about 780,000, but, uh, and the other one that still works, it's the DNA JECOM client. And that's that's a subscription service. And I do have the subscription. Um, it's like $5 a month, $50 a year. Uh, but that one, you have to do one at a time. And, you know, when it takes, it, some of them, it can take an hour, a couple hours to download. And, you know, it. Because of you know other stuff I'm doing and stuff, it literally takes me about four days to download all my matches. So, mm. Mm. so that's why I like the DNA Match Manager. I just do it, and once in a while it might have a hiccup on one or two kits, and it lets you know. So then you just restart it with, then it'll just do those two or which whatever. So, but. The DNA match manager is my, my preferred one. And it also works great downloading from GEDmatch too. So it just makes it easy. Okay. So, and all the other sites, you can just download them directly, include, including GEDmatch. But like I said, I've got, tw I've got 24 kits on, on GEDmatch and, uh, um, Now, like I said, it's one thing I can download them all at once. So, but the DNA Jetcom client does still have advantages, especially on my heritage and stuff. It takes forever, but uh, for getting like the how how everyone matches everyone, how your matches match your other matches. That some of the DNA Jetcom client is good at getting so. And the DNA match manager does not do that. So. Okay, I've only had a chance to watch half of that uh, video, but um, I was getting a little bit confused, but I'm going to uh, finish watching it today. Yeah. So. Well, well, like I said, it, yeah, you may not understand it full off, but like I said, it should at least give you at least some of the basics. So it's like, you know, and then likewise, when you get hung up on a part during the class tomorrow, then you can, you know, ask the question. So, okay, thanks. So, um, any other questions? No, yep. well, that then I'll see you tomorrow. It's going to be 5 p.m. my time, so about not quite a half hour from now, only tomorrow. So, Okay, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to start right at the same right at the time, but um, yeah. I'll try and get in there as soon as I can. Otherwise, I'll watch the recording. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. And then even afterwards, if you've got any questions, just just post it in the group. So. Okay. Thanks, John. Yep. Appreciate Thanks. it. Okay. Have okay. a good one. Hey. Have a good. Thank night. you so much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.